will never forget the night that I had to wrestle with death. Now, you would too if you were standing alone in a morgue with a dead body lying before you. Now, as a hospital chaplain, I had seen many people die before and had been down in that morgue more often than I ever really wanted. But this, this death was different. This time, I had to die. King Darius has witnessed many deaths in his own time, most coming from his own hand. He had seen many people sentenced down to the lion's den, and this was not his first time he saw a man be cast down into the den full of starving lions. But in the darkness of his palace that night, he realized that this death was different. This time, he had to die. I looked down at that body stuffed into the sterile bag and read the tag tied to the zipper. Mark Salander, age 31. He wasn't some convicted rapist or a serial killer. He could have been my friend, my brother, or even my husband. He should not have had to die. He was innocent. And I so desperately wanted to save him. King Darius is having his own excruciatingly long night. No food, no entertainment, no sleep. He has been pacing back and forth in his palace chambers, haunted by the image of his faithful servant, one of his top administrators, an Israelite exile named Daniel. Daniel never stole any money. He never abused his power. He never betrayed his king's trust. Daniel was innocent. And King Darius desperately wanted to save him. Working as a hospital chaplain, you will be called many names. Pastor, reverend, clergy lady, holy roller, <laughs> other ones that are less flattering. <sighs> but the doctors and the nurses and the patients would call on me, needing my pastoral presence, wanting my chaplain's care. They needed my help in the worst imaginable situations. They believed deep down that I had a connection between down here and up there that my prayers carry further on into heaven. I knew that the prideful voices in my head were beginning to get hungrier for power and prestige. They started to manipulate my thoughts. Maybe I do have the perfect pastoral prayer for every possible patient. Maybe I have some divine touch. Maybe I have the healing hands. Maybe I've got the power. But you see, pride only gives the illusion of power. King Darius, the successor of King Belshazzar, is reorganizing his kingdom. He has got over a hundred administrators, and he has three main voices in his head, one being an Israelite exile. Now, like its predecessor, this kingdom is experiencing exploitation and corruption. Pride is a crafty, deceitful creature, thirsty for glory and hungry for power. It will prey on the weak-minded with manipulation and trickery. This time its victim is King Darius. Pride began carving its way through this kingdom, getting each one of the administrators to sign a new decree. The men carrying this disease returned to the king with a platter full of sweet, seductive words, tickling the ears of the king with flattery. They said, O oh, king, you should live forever. There is none greater than you. You should be worshipped in all the land. No one should be worshipped over you. And so King Darius 
signs on the bottom line without reading the fine print. If only he knew that pride is only an illusion to power. My pride was still swelling that day that I walked into ICU room number three and saw a man lying there on life support. I read his chart, Mark Salander, age 31. His wife, his kids, his family is sitting in the room, eyes bloodshot, hearts heavy. I sit with them and hear their painful reality. Yesterday morning, Mark was on his way to work when he got sideswiped by an SUV on I-35. Soon, the doctor comes in and gives the bleak diagnosis. Mark is terminal. There is no hope. And then the family asked me to pray a prayer of healing. And so I pray. I pray holding their hands, standing around his bed. I read Psalms 23 sip, as they sip on their coffees. All day long I pray and I pray and I pray for a miracle. You see, the law of death was beyond my clergy power. King Darius sits satisfied on his royal throne and with his new decree, and in walks these ravenous rulers with devastating news about Daniel. King Darius, Daniel, is on his deathbed. Yesterday morning he was going about his normal prayer routine when he got sideswiped by the fancy new ordinance. <laughs> King Darius is devastated. He begins racing around the city trying to find a loophole, trying to find a way to save his beloved Daniel. All day long he tries and he tries and he tries to find a miracle. But this law of death is beyond his kingly power. That evening, the family says their goodbyes, and I stand there helpless, powerless. I do not have the divine touch, the perfect prayer. All I can give them is my deep sympathy and a simple response. May God deliver you from this dark hour. Death can be painfully humbling. Dusk has arrived, and King Darius watches the guards carry Daniel down into the den of lions. He has run out of options. He has run out of hoops to jump through. He's helpless. He's powerless. He throws up one last Hail Mary and calls out to Daniel, May the God whom you continually serve deliver you. The thought of Daniel's death for King Darius was painfully humbling. I'm still staring down at Mark's body. In the coldness of that morgue, when my phone rings, the family has decided to donate Mark's body, and the organ collector is right outside. I wheel his body out of the morgue and see a man smiling widely. He looks at me and says, wow, chaplain, looks like you've had a long night. And with little enthusiasm, I say, well, death will do that to you. It felt like I had been down in that morgue for an eternity. And then I see morning shining through a nearby window. He looks up at me, and his smile smiles widen. He says, Chaplain, have you not heard? Have, did you not know how long we've been waiting for this match? Today, Chaplain, someone will have new life. 
Dawn has indeed arrived, and Darius can bear his palace tomb no longer. He gets up and races without his kingly robe towards that den. He calls out for deliverance, and Daniel cries up from below and says, O king, live forever. My God has indeed brought salvation. King Darius is exceedingly glad. He cries out to the world and says, I now know the God of life whose dominion shall come to no end, whose kingdom shall last for eternity. I look up at that organ collector, astonished by this revelation. My God of life has indeed rescued me from the jaws of pride, from the jaws of death, my God has delivered me. I can now see the miracle of his sovereignty. You see, death comes for everyone, even kings and clergy. But in the morning, the God of life always brings salvation. Amen. Amen.